Hello there! This is Ariska Page. My name is Chuck. This is a multi-part series on propagation and in this episode, we're going to talk about leaf propagation. Intro. In the previous episode, I've shown you how to manually or to hand pollinate echeverias, and I did that on a few of my plants. This Bella Rouge is one of them, and as you can see right now, the flowers are still quite fleshy, they haven't dried out yet, which means that the whole process isn't done yet. In the course of doing the demo, I had to remove some of the other flower stalks, and here's one of those. As you can see, the flower stalk comes with lots of leaves. These are quite fleshy, and these are pretty good, they're very good candidates for leaf propagation. If you want to know more, make sure to check out my 2018 propagation series. The link will be up here. I still have other propagation videos planned and if you don't want to miss out, then make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're on YouTube and like my page if you're watching on Facebook. Now a bit of warning, there's going to be a bit of jargon in this next section because I'm going to talk a little bit about anatomy. Nerd alert! Let's talk flower stalks. Now, this is something that you and I would be calling a flower stalk, but if you're a botanist, then this would be called the peduncle. So the flower stalk, the entire stalk, is peduncle. It's fine as long as you do not put an O there somewhere. <laughs> this is a peduncle, this is a peduncle, so it's this, 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 and this. Technically, this stem here, the whole thing containing the, the entire structure, this is what you would term as the peduncle and the small branches that are connecting to each individual flowers here this is what you would call the pedicel pedicel so the first one is peduncle next is pedicel and along the peduncle you would see some leaves some of them are large some are small and there's actually two different types of leaves the first one would be the same type of leaf as the normal leaves you would see along the stem, along the main stem. And the second would be, in botanical terms, would be something called the bract. B-R-A-C-T. Bract. To keep things very simple, I'm going to talk about things in terms of echeverias, relative to echeverias. So in echeverias, bracts are a lot smaller than regular leaves. So these are regular leaves. And bracts would be something like this. This is more apparent in other species like the Agavoides and maybe even the Colorata. And you might be wondering what's the importance, what's the significance of knowing the difference. Well, I tell you, my friend, I have lots more success with regular leaves compared to bract-like leaves. Because for one, they are much bigger, much thicker, which means that they are going to dry out. They are going to last much longer before they dry out. And secondly, they look a lot more resilient to changes in the temperature, in the environment, in the climate. That's pretty much it actually. Now I think it would be much easier if I show you around the garden, show you a lot more peduncles or flower stalks, and show you what a brat looks like. Okay, so here is an example. We're looking at an Echeveria Golden Glow, this green thing right here. And as you can see, it has several flower stalks already growing. Some of them, well, none of them have opened yet. They're still closed. So these are still quite young. You will notice that some of these flower stalks are not like the others. Take for instance this one. It has thicker stems, bigger leaves. These ones are more slender, narrower. The leaves are longer, narrower, smaller, I guess. And also, the leaves are closer to the color of the peduncle. I've got no plans for using this golden glow in any hand pollination experiments. So I'm going to chop off these flower stalks and you could have a better look on the table. So here are the flower stalks from that golden glow and I've separated them into two groups. On this side you would see that the leaves are much more narrow and smaller than the ones on this side. You can clearly see that the leaves are bigger. I like to think of this as aborted pups or pups that have gone terminal, you know, turning into a flower stalk. 
because sometimes if you're lucky this does not turn into a flower but in this case I'm pretty sure this is based on how much it is elongating because a golden glow is typically more compact than this and I'm pretty sure this is going to be turning into a flower stalk. The general difference between a regular leaf and a bract-like leaf is that they are smaller at least for echeverias. In the case of the golden glow the differences between the two is not as significant so I think I need to show you a better example. This one's here is an Echeveria elegans. As you can see, it's got several of the flower stalks here, peduncles. Most of them are mature. A lot of them have been pollinated already. And if you look closely at those, the ones that have flowers, the leaves are significantly smaller than the regular leaves right here. But sometimes, if you look at these ones here, these are pups. I know for sure that they are pups now. But sometimes this would go terminal, they would, they would elongate or just stretch out. But yet they have already grown these types of leaves, the regular type. And that's why I think that the flower stalks with the bigger leaves are the regular types of leaves. It's just a pup which has turned into a flower stalk. And I tend to keep a lookout for those because they are prime candidates for leaf propagation. Because I wouldn't care about using up all of the leaves because it's terminal anyway, you know? And I wouldn't want to waste the size of this pup by removing the lower leaves. So if you're the type who wants to mass propagate but at the same time do not want to waste the pups because I could already use the pups as is, then look out or watch out for terminal pups. It's getting quite dark. It might even rain so I'll grab as many flower stalks as I can and use them for my leaf propagation. You can probably tell from the noise, it's raining now. But I think I've got enough materials here for the demo. I've included a couple of flower stalks here. It's this one and this one. I'm pretty sure you could tell it apart from the others. And if you look closely, the leaves are a lot smaller. These are black-like leaves and they are pretty much dry. They dry out easily due to their size. They just fall off. That simple. So this is exactly why I do not advise using them for your leaf propagations. And because of that, you can just toss these two away. They're useless. And let's have a look at the remaining ones. So I've got an assortment of leaves here. They came from a bunch of different Echeverias and Pachyverias. And what you can do from this point is just to harvest them. It's as easy as just flicking them from the base. So make sure to check out what the base looks like and if it has a narrow base like this one and you could just put apply pressure to the side and switch it, flick it to the side, sideways. You could also grab it two fingers on both sides and just twist the whole stem. I prefer doing it with one finger like this, just applying pressure to the side because it comes off easily that way. As we get to the top, the base gets a bit more wide. So what I do is to flick from side to side and it comes off easily that way. Let's keep doing this for all of the other leaves and at this point, I've gotten so much from so many different plants that I don't know where they came from. Or well, technically I do know where they came from. I can recognize the leaves, but down the line I might forget where they came from. So, good luck to us. <laughs> oh well. That's part of the fun. Figuring out what types of pops we get. Would be a surprise, man. So like before, the leaves on this one is quite narrow. So it's easy to just push it from side to side. Let's try this one next. The leaves are also narrow, so it's a it's an easy work just twisting them. I usually stop by the time I get to the flowers because I'm pretty sure that the merry stem has already been used. And in this case, the flowers grew out of it. Let's just do the same for everything else and we'll be done with this step.
things can be a bit trickier with wider leaves like this one. This is from my big red. And what you'll have to do is to be very careful with the bottom part. You need to apply pressure at the bottom. You, have, you could still use the same twisting technique, but what you're wanting to do is to push this out from one side and the other side. That would remove it cleanly. You don't just twist them because it would break off the leaf because it has a wider connection to the node. As a bonus, don't forget that we still have these leaves from this flower stalk that we could remove. This is the flower stalk that I pollinated last week and it has a good sized uh, set of leaves here. So I'm going to use this for uh, leaf propagation. I'm not going to waste them. I have to be careful though not to break off the stem because this is actively uh, fertilizing right now. I would not want it to lose out on some nutrients. We've only done the first step for now, which is to harvest the leaves. The next steps would involve waiting for it to grow, pushing out the pop or roots or both. Of course, we won't be seeing that happening now because I've just removed them from the plant. There are a few steps involved in propagating from leaves. The first step, of course, is to harvesting the leaves. The next step is waiting for them to sprout. And after that would be the step where you wait for the parent leaf to dry out. And that's when you start panicking, I guess. Because by then, there would be nothing else helping you supply moisture and nutrients to the pop, the leaf pop. Because the pops primarily get their sustenance from the leaves. This is why it's so important that the leaf is healthy and plump because it still has something to give. Stop raining! Yay! So far, I've shown you leaf propagation using leaves from the flower stalk. And you might be wondering why I've shown you this rather than showing you how to pluck leaves from the main rosette. Yes, you could always do that. There's usually a better chance of success from those leaves. But I do not like taking from the main rosette because I like my plants larger. And removing it from the main rosette would make the plant smaller, you know? Of course, you're removing the leaves, so you're, you're going to be left with a smaller plant. But if you're willing to sacrifice a plant, then why not? Of course, you could grab one of your extras, grab all of the leaves from it, or maybe keep some of the top leaves because you would need those to continue the growth, then by all means, do that. No, I'm not going to stop you. That's a very viable way to get a good success rate. I've even seen some people purposely put some of their plants in the shade, you know, so they get leggy. That way, it would be a lot easier to pluck out the leaves. Take this one, for example, this uh, Grappusidum Francesco Baldi. This etiolated and there's a lot of spacing in between. So it would be an easy matter to pluck out the leaves individually and besides you'll be doing it a favor because you're going to reset it anyway you would not want to waste the leaves in the stem so you could what you could do is you could harvest all of the leaves and keep the stem as well then chop off the head replant the head you'll end up having a compact rosette a compact head once it starts growing again and along the stem you'll be growing some plantlets along the lateral meristems and on the leaves, you might be growing some plantlets as well. And just from one plant, you're potentially looking at dozens and dozens of new plants. Leaf propagation is a vegetative form of reproduction, which means that you're going to get an exact copy of the parent plant. You're essentially doing a clone. There's no two sets of genes interacting, no sexual reproduction involved, unlike uh, doing it from seeds, pollinating. If you'd like to know more of the gritty details of leaf propagation, so one of my first videos was a guide on how to propagate succulents from leaves. You could refer to that. There's lots of information packed in there. I'm thinking of refreshing that tutorial sometime soon, but, but until I work on that, that video is still pretty good. Looks like the rain has indeed stopped and it's starting to clear out outside. So after doing this video, I might be heading out to grab more leaves and see what else I could use. But before I let you go, I'd like to show you an update on the head chops or the echeveras that I beheaded a few episodes back. As you can see, they've pushed out lots of pops already. And from this point, the game is to make sure that they do not dry out. So I have to water them more now. It's still easy to do that right now because we're still in spring. But when summer comes around, it's going to be significantly harder for me to keep them well hydrated because they are going to dry a lot faster. 
And my only hope for that is to keep them in the shade. That way, there's less chance for them to get evaporated, you know? But if I leave them in the shade, that means that the pups would be growing leggy. But I guess leggy is better than dead. So in the next episode, I'm going to wrap up this propagation series and I'm going to show you the results of all of them. I'm also going to discuss the pros and cons of each. And I'm going to tell you which one is my most favorite method. Right now, I'm telling you it's not the money method, although that would be fun. I wish I had the money to keep doing that. I'm sure you've also heard of water propagation and in the next episode, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on it. Make sure you like and subscribe or follow whichever platform you're in and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Special thanks to my Patreon supporters such as Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Noti, Camila Baez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledged on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram that's at Seriscapades and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEcheveria.